We have to be careful how we, what sort of example we are to little children. It says in verse 6, verse 5, if you receive a child, you're receiving me. You cannot receive Jesus into your house today, he's in heaven. But if you receive a child, not just receive a child, you receive a child, it says in verse 5, in Jesus' name. It is our responsibility as parents to receive every single child God has given you in Jesus' name. That means you don't despise any of them. You don't show favoritism to one over the other. Some, show, some who have daughters will show favoritism to the sons. And if some who have many sons, their one daughter, they show favoritism to that daughter. They're not receiving a child in Jesus' name. They're receiving children just like any godless worldly person receives children. And I'm sorry to say that's how many Christians receive their children. If you're truly a godly parent, there'll be zero partiality in you towards all your children. Sons, daughters, intelligent ones, stupid ones, doesn't make a difference. All will be the same because God gave you all of them. And you receive every child in Jesus' name. God doesn't tell us how many children you should have. But if you do have a child, whether it's one or ten, you receive them in Jesus' name. Everyone, boy, girl, intelligent, not intelligent, retarded, doesn't make a difference. You receive that child in Jesus' name and say, that is like Jesus coming into my house. And you will treat every one of that children like Jesus. That's what it means. And if you do that, you'll have Jesus living in your house. People wonder, how can I have Jesus living in my house? I'll tell you one simple way, first step. Receive every child God has given you in Jesus' name. That doesn't mean you don't have to discipline them. That is not Jesus himself. I'm, he doesn't say that that is Jesus. That's a child. But I receive that child in Jesus' name. And therefore I want to train that child to bring him up. To, to serve God and to fear God and to live for him. And so I have to discipline. I've got to love him, correct him, lead him right or lead her. All right, that's important. And then it says in verse 6, Be careful that you don't cause any of them to stumble. That means something they see in your life will cause them to stumble. What are the things that can cause a child to stumble? What they see in your home. Not that this is a small house with only one bedroom. That will never cause any child to stumble. You can teach that child that having a big house and wealth is not the most important thing. What are the things that cause a child to stumble? It is the behavior of its parents. The way they behave with each other. And the way they behave towards a child. You can rule a child like a tyrant. Like a dictator. You better listen to me. Does God rule you like that? Does God rule you like a dictator saying, you better listen to me, otherwise I'll teach you a lesson. Have you, ever, have you ever heard God speak to you like that? I'd run away from such a God. We are to represent God to our children. And we must not speak to our children in any way God doesn't speak to us. And God rebukes us, sure. If you haven't heard a word of rebuke from God, you haven't heard him at all. I hear rebukes from God constantly. So it's perfectly right to discipline and correct and rebuke our children, but not as a tyrant or a dictator, but as a loving father would do. That, but the way we speak to our children can stumble them. And also, above more than that, the way they see you talking to your wife, or you as a wife talking to your husband, they watch that. They, they see something and they can stumble over that. When they're one year old, they don't understand. Maybe even when they are two years old, they understand. But by the time they are three years old, they begin to understand. They begin to understand the tone of your voice. And if you cause a child to stumble, Jesus said, it is better to take a heavy millstone, verse 6, and hang it around your neck and go and be drowned in the depth of the sea. Uh, he didn't say a millstone. Please notice, Jesus is very careful. You know what a millstone is? There's a heavy stone things in which they grind. And he said, make sure it's a really heavy one. Don't take one of these light ones because you may come up to the surface. 
Make sure it's a heavy one that you'll never come up to the surface when you go into the sea. Can you imagine the meek and gentle Jesus speaking like this? See, many people have a one-sided picture of Jesus that he was always so gentle and gracious. He told a woman caught in adultery, I don't condemn you. The Samaritan woman who was divorced five times comforted her and he comforted the sick people and touched the lepers. That's one very important side of Jesus. But that's like cutting a body in half. You've seen one half. But what about the other half? This is the other half. Where he said, if you offend a little child, you better look for the heaviest millstone you can find, tie it around your neck, strong enough so it doesn't drop out, and find a sea where you can jump and go in. What is that called? Committing? What? Suicide. Did Jesus ever ask people to commit suicide? I know he told people to pluck out the eye, that's not suicide. Cut off the hand, that's not suicide. But did he ever tell people to commit suicide? You know, Jesus can't possibly say that. Please read carefully. Suicide is a terrible thing. Nobody must ever do it. It's like murdering. It's like murdering yourself. And Jesus didn't actually say you must cut off your hand or pull out the eye. What he meant was, it's better to lose your eye than to lust. That's what he said. It's better to lose your hand than to commit sexual sin with your hand. And he's saying it's better to commit suicide, which is the worst possible thing, than to stumble a little child by your actions. If you take that seriously, if you see how serious suicide is, and then see that Jesus took that worst possible thing, worst possible thing you can do, to murder yourself, and then say, that's better than stumbling a little child. If you took that seriously, you'd be very, very careful about the way you live in your home. You'd be very, very careful about the example you set in your home and how you behave, how you talk, and how your children see you handle money or how they see you speak about other people at the dining table, about other people who are not with you. Ask yourself whether you take these verses seriously.